we see an event like an auto wreck, we often tell others about it. There are many ways to tell others about an event, but we'll explore and contrast two very different ways. The way of a newspaper report and the way of a poem. A newspaper report might be written like this. Tom Bowman, a 19-year-old college student of 1821 Hayward Street, was killed last night. And James Bowman, his three-year-old brother, was critically injured in an auto accident. The accident occurred at Euclid and Westwood Boulevards. Such a report tells us what happened, when it happened, where it happened, and who was involved. It is completely factual, objective. The writer does not give his opinion of the accident, nor does he tell us how the accident affected him. He offers no comment on the meaning of this particular accident, nor upon accidents in general. But now, let's see how the same event might be reported in a poem. The poet, Carl Shapiro, tells us about an auto wreck. It's quick, soft, silver bell beating, beating, and down the dark, one ruby flare pulsing out red light like an artery. The ambulance at top speed floating down past beacons and illuminated clocks. Wings in a heavy curve dips down and breaks speed entering the crowd. The doors leap open, emptying light. Stretchers are laid out. The mangle lifted and stowed into the little hospital. Then the bell breaking the hush tolls once. The ambulance with its terrible cargo rocking, slightly rocking, moves away as the doors, an afterthought, are closed. We are deranged, walking among the cops who sweep glass and are large and composed. One is still making notes under the light. One with a bucket douches ponds of blood into the street and gutter. One hangs lanterns on the wrecks that cling, empty husks of locusts to iron poles. Our throats were tight as tourniquets. Our feet were bound with splints. But now, like convalescents, intimate and gauche, we speak through sickly smiles and warn with a stubborn saw of common sense the grim joke and the banal resolution. The traffic moves around with care. But we remain, touching a wound that opens to our richest horror. Already old, the question, who shall die, becomes unspoken. Who is innocent? For death in war is done by hands. Suicide has cause and stillbirth logic. But this invites the occult mind.
cancels our physics with a sneer and spatters all we knew of denouement across the expedient and wicked stones. One event, two ways of reporting it. The news reporter's objective, impersonal, unemotional. The poem, subjective, personal, highly emotional. But what does the poet do to make it that way? First, he selects an incident or an event, isolating from it those elements that impress him personally. He concentrates our attention on those elements. The doors emptying light. The mangled, lifted and stowed. Wrecks, empty husks of locusts. He heightens the effect of the elements through image evoking words and phrases. The cops who sweep glass. One ruby flare pulsing out red light like an artery. Throats tight as tourniquets. But we remain, touching a wound that opens to our richest horror. So, by the selection of specific elements and through the use of highly descriptive words, the poet makes us see as he saw, feel as he felt. His poem becomes an emotional experience in which we participate. Finally, the poet may attempt to make an event meaningful. He tries to extract from it some hard core of thought, some universal human truth or significance. So, an accident, by itself, senseless and without logic, is made to carry implications about the pattern of each man's existence, about each man's place in the world, and even about the meaning of life itself. The question, who shall die, becomes unspoken. Who is innocent? Through poetry, our lives can take on added dimension. Through poetry, we have an opportunity to share, in some measure, the lives of all men.